Και τώρα μπορούμε να προχωρήσουμε στην επόμενη ομιλία μας με θέμα Aruma Acoustics, The Balancing Act for Interior Designers versus Acousticians and End Users. Και για το σκοπό αυτό, καλωσορίζουμε τον Matthew Carter. Hello Matthew, it's nice to have you in our central stage. Uh, thank you for having me. Can everyone hear me? Just as a quick sound check. Yes, we Hello. Can. Yes, of course. All right. Very oh, good. Perfect. Very good. All right. Perfect. I'll share screen now, and uh, we'll get moving. I think we're uh, we're moving through time. So, for me, I'm as uh, as the introduction. I'm Matthew Carter. I'm with uh, Acoustics Middle East. So I'm joining here from uh, the city of Dubai. So nice to uh, meet you all. So. Not understanding or not knowing the depth of everyone's experience and knowledge here, I'll start with some basics. So in terms of sound, this is what we hear in terms of humans and how we perceive sound. So how do we classify sound? So sound is measured in decibels, which is a unit of pressure. The higher the number, the louder the sound when we're qualifying it. And as far as the human ear perceives sound, we have an A weighting classification. So you will see sound with a DB in brackets A. So this talks about the A weighting of the sound characteristic. So what is noise? So Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I'll just ask you to press the hide button on your screen. Press the what button on my screen, sorry? The hide button. Uh, it's sure. On the bottom. Done. Yeah, this is one. that Thank better? You. No problem at all. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll carry on. So what is noise? So noise is ultimately unwanted sound. Now the steep learning curve begins. So acoustics is, uh, I've heard people call it a witchcraft or a black art. There's a lot of different terminologies and it can be confusing. So there does tend to be so, a real confusion around the terminology and it doesn't help when the common unit is dB. So everything is referenced in dB. So the number of times I've had clients come to me and say, I want 50 dB. And when I ask them in what context, generally get a response saying, I don't know, I just need 50 dB. So at this point, it's it's where I would say to everyone that is here today, it all relates to the context and the wording of the specification. So English is a language. Um, I know for majority on the call now, English might not be your first, uh, your mother tongue or your spoken language, but in any language, we have sentence structures, we have a word, comma, punctuation. So for the clever people, it can take on a different context. So I've added here as a bit of a pun. So hunters, please use caution when hunting pedestrians using walk trails. So without punctuation, this has a completely different meaning. If we added commas, then it would, it makes sense for what they're intending to say. And the same goes for acoustics. So acoustic terminology. So I find a very good, uh, a very good website called the Engineering Toolbox. So for many people, if you want to learn on acoustics or, or any other sort of engineering terminology very quickly, this is a very useful website to go on for your own uh, experience. So when we're looking at noise, we have what we would call internal noise. So this could be the ambient noise, the HVAC, so the air conditioning, the mechanical electrical plumbing. It could be external noise intrusion. So there are a number of factors that control the internal noise. Common terms that you will see are the L equivalent. So this is essentially the average noise over a period. You'll see NR or NC. These are noise rating or noise coefficient curves. So these are a series of curves which I've shown on the screen here that we would plot the noise against to then determine which NR or NC value it relates to. Then we've got airborne sound insulation. So commonly this is around speech privacy. So how good is a petition? So if we look at Knopf materials, they have many different systems, be it gypsum walls, gypsum ceiling, shaft wall risers, floor, ceiling. There's many different configurations ultimately we're trying to block noise with those systems. So it creates a barrier. So commonly we'll see STC, which is a sound transmission coefficient, RW, which is a weighted sound reduction curve. And then we can talk in terms of a laboratory rating. So we test the system in a laboratory under a pristine condition. And then we do our best for a contractor to build that situation in the field. And then we will test it in situ. And then there's field descriptors to relate to laboratory versus a field scenario. Now the lab test report, so I, I say it loosely, this is the insurance policy for the designer or the supplier saying, okay, well, we've designed it based on a lab report, but often it's the, uh, the noose for the contractor. So 
if you're stuck with a design and build arrangement, then you're holding all the liability at the end. So if you've proceeded down a path with without the right advice, then you can come unstuck. So this is an example of a laboratory test report for, for those that may have or may not have seen one before. Now, reverberation and room acoustics. So this is more the fundamental of what I'm uh, diving in on today. So essentially reverberation is how absorptive or how reflective a room is and the characteristic of the materials within the room for either absorbing or reflecting uh, sound. So the gentleman that spoke before me was talking about different materials and reflectors in theatres and libraries and different atriums and, and functions to create a different ambience and environment. So essentially, this is what we're doing. Now, the common terms would be RT. So this is reverberation time. T60, which is the time it would take for the sound in a room to be absorbed by 60 decibels. TMF is the a similar function, but we talk about mid frequencies. So we're targeting more the speech frequencies. And then when we're talking material finishes, so Knuff have the likes of the AMF range, we have uh, the Heracles, the Hera Designs, the Cleneo Systex, lots of different systems. So on those, if we're looking at materials in isolation, we talk NRC, which is a noise reduction coefficient, and then more loosely, we're talking absorption coefficients. So a question again to the colleague earlier in how does he go and uh, measure in a room? He comes in and whistles. Okay, so for me, Lucy speaking, I might go in a room and clap. So you'll, if you see acousticians going into a space, they'll walk around like a duck, clapping, and they're generally seeing how the room reacts to that clap and how quickly it gets absorbed. So in the old days, prior to 9-11, I'd travel around the world with a starter pistol, and I would use that as a way to energize a space and then measure how quickly it was uh, absorbed but nowadays you get on a plane with a, a set of uh, nail clippers and you're arrested so i've given up on the the starter pistols so now we we've moved to the innocent method so the balloons but then i had uh, one of my office tea boys play a prank on me recently and the balloon in the bottom right was what he bought me as a joke so i've moved away from the balloons now we tend to try and use speakers to energize the rooms rather than relying on a, a gunshot or a balloon as an impulse and find that more accurate now the uh, another terminology is footfall impact so this is more relevant when we have vertical living so you might have someone with a apartment or an office above you and it has a hard floor finish so on these we're trying to absorb impact of the the footfall impact so on the space below you don't hear it so quickly cruising over the terms you'll see impact isolation class or lnw Again, laboratory versus field. So the intent with this is having the lowest possible noise level in the room below uh, as received from the impact. So there's field descriptors that relate to those, F being field of INC or L with the dash being the field version of the LNW. So how would we measure that, do you ask? So we have a, a machine that looks a bit like a robot and it's got a series of metal hammers that sit on the underside of the machine and they uh, clack, clack, clack on the floor, and we'll measure that noise in the space below. Now, moving into uh, where we want to be, in, or where I want to head the discussion. So it's looking at the balancing act for designing a space versus an acoustician. So the top right image there, that's what an interior designer sees. The bottom right is more what I see. So let's, let's call it a black box theater, a chair in the middle, what's the general experience. So I would often say I'm a blind man with ears and fundamentally I'm listening to the room and how the room reacts and feeds sound and energy back to me as opposed to what I'm seeing in the room. So let's consider a few anecdotal case studies as the best means to deliver my message today. So interior designers are ultimately focused on the look and feel of the space, whereas acousticians see the space through a different set of eyes. So fundamentally we see it through our ears. So looking at the example below, so that's what the interior designer sees on the left for me. So I've, I've included an example here. So the Burj Al Arab, uh, which people may or may not be familiar with, it's a seven star hotel in Dubai. Recently, they've activated the hotel in such that you can go as a visitor and go through spaces of the hotel, literally as a, a sightseeing tour to see how the other half of the world, or then I'll say the other half, but the upper end of the, the wealthy 
spend the days. So bottom left is the interior designer's image. Upper right is how I've related to the image. So if we look at the room acoustics and early sound reflection, trying to sort of dumb this down and make it a bit easier for uh, people to understand. So we've got some carpeted floor inlays. So they're green. So we're looking at an absorption coefficient of about 0.4. So in terms of the 0.4, it's 40% absorptive, 60% reflective. We've got some low height sofas in orange. They're padded, a padded fabric, a mix of leather and vinyl. They're around 25% absorptive. We've got a mirror effect ceiling, which is only 5% absorptive. We've got some marble floors in red. That's 0.2 to 0.5% uh, absorptive. We've got the plasterboard ceiling, which again is around 0.2 to 0.5 and the walls are a mix of plaster red. So looking at the space, there's not, not a lot there acoustically that's doing as favors for how the space reacts. This space is the primary lobby. So people get off their little shuttle bus. They're coming into the hotel, they're buzzing, they're, they're looking to have the experience. So this space is a mix of different nationalities, different languages, all very excited to, to go into the Burj Al Arab. So Looking at this, we had a series of questions with the interior designer and it, it becomes a negotiation. So it's looking at what they want it to look like and then looking at how do we make it work acoustically. So step one, we said, how about we use a mirror stretch ceiling? So for some people, they may be familiar with Barisol. It's a stretch material like a drum skin. You can get different uh, makeups of it. Some of them are, have micro perforation, so to the to the naked eye, you don't see the holes, but from a sound perspective, the holes allow sound to pass through to a substrate above. So in this situation, we said, how about we put an absorptive ceiling tile, Heracleth, Hera design, a wood wall panel behind the mirror, and then suddenly we've got an absorptive socket. The ID, uh, so ID, sorry, as an acronym, interior designer, they said, no, it'll look different to the polished metal effect that we want. We've already got polished metal from another area on the site, so the client wants to reuse it. So that was that. Was that. So then we challenged, can we introduce carpet in the high traffic areas to minimize sound reflection, given that we've got a parallel mirror ceiling and the floor? So carpet inlays, these sorts of things. So the ID said, no, it'll look different to the marble look that we're after. But we were able to challenge them to say, okay, you've got some seating areas where you will have people sitting statically. It is nice to have some carpet in those areas so you get some localized suck out of the room to basically try and create a little vacuum in a few pockets. We then challenged and said, all right, what about the walls? Can we change wall coverings and, and do some other things to make the walls uh, now absorbent rather than reflective? And again, we were told, nope, it'll look different to what we want to do and the general theme won't be what we're after. So the outcome of this, we're able to challenge them to get some irregular finishes on the wall. So it has, a, let's say, a rough sort of sawtooth finish to it. And we've got some felt coverings in other parts. So it does help to scatter the sound and in some ways we get some absorption as well. And then we challenge them further and said, all right, well, look, you've got a plasterboard ceiling why don't we look at having an acoustic seamless plasterboard with an insulation backing? And the outcome, sure. If that looks like normal plasterboard, then this is a perfect solution. So that's what we did. And we ended up with the Knopf Cleanio Systex with the seamless finish and insulation on top of the ceiling. So this covered everywhere around the, uh, other than the polished metal, the rest of the ceiling was the Cleanio and the space works uh, extremely well. So everyone's very happy with it. Now, in acoustics, you don't always get, uh, let's say, the, the preferred solution. So there are some ways that we can mask the space. So you'll see water features, you'll see uh, other elements in a lobby that create a bit of natural ambience. Other than creating an environment, they're also helping to mask other sounds in the space. So we challenged and said, how about some background music? in the uh, visitor lobby area, which will help to create some speech masking. So everyone was happy with that. So the speakers were added, some small speakers, just to add a bit of ambience, but it also helps if someone's talking at one end of the lobby, you're not hearing them across the lobby to disrupt other, uh, other person's experience. And that's what we did. Now, looking at different situations, so people often ask me with acoustics, wow, it's a specialized field. 
yes, it is specialized, but in practice, it has a place in every uh, in every aspect of life and every aspect of fit out. So here's an example of a typical food court, which I'm sure everyone's eaten in a food court before. So the interior designers, they're focused on the visuals, the function, the lighting, these sorts of things. Now I'll play, I'll just step to another screen and play a, an audio file of this space because I actually, uh, for the purpose of this of this call today, all right, I'll just step through one. Bear with me for a minute. All right, let's see if this can work. So I'll play a, a small section of this. I'm sure that's enough to get the point across. So basically, it sounds like a busy uh, bus terminal. Um, it wasn't nice to be uh, to be sitting in, and I couldn't get out of there quick enough, nor could my family. So as an acoustician, we would consider how noisy and reverberant is that space. So I often say to people as an acoustic consultant, um, or in, in layman's perspective, you basically close your eyes and listen. So you're waiting to see how the room reacts. Um, is it a space that you would like to be in? Is it a space that you can have a, a nice conversation with people and you enjoy being in the space? Or is it literally a space that is too noisy? Um, your heart rate is elevated because you, you're basically in a, a situation of distress. It's the, the fight or flight type scenario going back to the old caveman days. So looking at that space as a, as a case study and as, a, as an example, there's so many different materials. So referencing back to Knopf, you've got the Danaline materials with the perforated holes, which insulation can go above. You've got baffle materials um, in the bottom corner here. I've shown a blacked out sort of A2 Heracleth or Hera design type product. So there's so many different ways that you could get acoustics into that space without changing the look and feel. So when you're challenging an interior designer, you're trying to match what they want to see, but you're changing it to materials that actually provide an acoustic benefit. So marking it up very simply, the gypsum bits to the side here could very easily be cleanio, seamless, or a Danaline with the perforation showing. There's a painted sky effect here, which could also be the cleanio. They've already got baffles. The baffles could be A2, Heraclete, or they could be a perforated timber. Well, there's so many different options, but all of this would have helped to make the ceiling an absorptive element and cut that reflection on the nastiness of the space. So would the space look any different? No, it wouldn't. Would it sound any different? Absolutely. So there'd be reduced reverberation. So how much echo is in the space? It would actually lower the noise levels. So I have done a number of case studies where we've gone and measured food courts with the noise or with, the, with no treatment, let's say and then with treatment, and we're looking at a difference about eight to 10 decibels, which is significant. 10 decibels to human perception is half as loud. And it makes it a more comfortable space to sit within and you get improved speech intelligibility by having that reduced reverberation and the lower noise levels. So the conclusions, ultimately, as a, as a material supplier, which can is, or a solution supplier, ultimately you're trying to achieve the look and feel of the interior designer you're trying to use materials that have the added benefit of an acoustic function and you create a space that is good for the eyes and ears of this world. So you've, it's a win-win in terms of the outcome. So a few other case studies just to, to show some applications. So these were, I'll say, a win-win for the interior designer, the acoustician and the end user. So Blah Blah is a, a big beach club in Dubai. Um, so there we've used enough plasterboard with the resilient ceiling with the phonic isolators purely from a, a noise breakout perspective because it is located with surrounding residential and hotel areas we then use the Knuff hair design finish for the ceiling for room absorption similarly there's lock stock and barrel so this is a multi-purpose space where they have a band they have djs it becomes a sports bar there's pool tables there's lots of different things going on 
This particular one was shoehorned into a hotel with guest rooms positioned directly above. So we had a equivalent of a mass barrier ceiling, similar to what you would see in cinema constructions with the resilient isolation. And we used the Canoff A2 Heraclith. Actually, we used the Tecta line in this one, and it was finished to the underside of the ceiling for the room absorption. Directly across the lobby from this one was STK, which is a high-end steakhouse out of the US, which basically turns into a bit of a club. So for there, again, we had the A2 Heraclith above the decorative slat. It was uh, blacked out, so no one would even know it's there, but the room uh, works much better for it acoustically. So moving forward in terms of education and lessons learned, so acoustics and internal climate on any projects uh, are easy targets for a client during the defect liability, liability period. So is the room too hot or too cold? Is it too noisy? So it's very easy to, to point at a room and say, I don't like it. I don't like the acoustics or the air conditioning is not doing its job. So these are, are things that clients need to get right and developers need to get right or you're left with a fight at the end with the end user that they could argue loosely and say it's not fit for purpose and then you're left with a shortfall of money's not paid in terms of no, I didn't. you didn't give me what I was after. So in promoting the use of Knopf materials for projects where there is an interior design aspect to consider, I would say to the people on this uh, presentation today, can the Knopf material satisfy the look and feel while adding value? So be it either acoustics or wellness. So there are products within the Knopf range that clean the air and uh, help with a wellness characteristic. So if we're looking at a few parameters, so what is the acoustic target for the space? Is there a material specification with some acoustical technical parameter that needed to be achieved? Is there an interior design finishes schedule that specifies the look and feel of the material or the characteristic of the material? Is there, so the challenge back to for you as Knopf is, is there a material within the Knopf product range that can achieve the points above? And then you open up the dialogue with the interior designer and the consultant team to then offer solutions. And if it doesn't match specifically one, two, and three, does it get close? Is it better? So it's a negotiation back and forth to show the pluses and minuses of what you can offer and then come to, uh, to give them the best possible solution. Now I'll say uh, street talk. So it's learning how to push back once uh, the power is knowledge or, or knowledge is uh, is danger, shall we say. So it's it's learning a, the terminology, looking at the specifications and then using using those specs and correspondence to to show that the Knopf material is compliant. So you basically you're not forcing that Knopf is used, but you're, you're getting it to a point where it's a, a why not scenario. So if your material ticks all the boxes, then then there's no reason for it not to be used. So today was meant as a quick intro to acoustics and uh, and sound matters without getting too heavy on the definitions. So at that point, I'll uh, open the forum and say, are there any questions? So perhaps you've got a site-specific dilemma that you want to uh, discuss. Uh, Matthew, that was a wonderful presentation, very informative. It's so... Uh, good to see that you walk around the problem with the interior designers uh, without actually arguing. You do your job uh, by finding a knauf solution and not raising an issue with them. Uh, thank you so much because uh, most of the products that you mentioned in, uh, in your projects, we are also using them here in, uh, in Greece. Uh, I'm glad I saw that you have uh, used the new acoustic ceiling with uh, the wallpaper, the cystic systems uh, that, uh, that we have. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. It's very informative. Uh, I don't know, Danai, perhaps would like to... Well, watching the world through your eyes has definitely been uh, an experience to remember. And thank uh, you very thank much you. for being here with us. You're welcome. Thank um, you very much. See you soon, then. <laughs>